We need to go on the offensive and bankrupt Wall Street and see that Wall Street is actually, at this point, um, bankrupt and, um, and turn this whole situation around so that, so that this doesn't actually become a precedent. So, you know, I would, because I think Detroit is a test case. It's going to, what's being done to say we're going to uphold the financial derivatives and trash the obligations to city workers. This is going to be taken elsewhere um, through this Chapter 9 filing process. Bill, and I, your, your five minutes, please. Okay. Up. I would just urge that all of you urge the United States Congress to intervene and pass Glass-Steagall in order to bankrupt Wall Street instead of Detroit and then other places. And that's the only way that this can be dealt with. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, speaker, Madam Clerk. Mr. Eric Mays. Mr. Mays. Yeah, good evening again. I came to this particular council meeting to communicate to the public, to the council, to the people in attendance, because I know a lot of people keep up with what's happening at council meetings, even during the emergency manager. I get people tell me all the time, I watch Channel 17. They watch Channel 17. They listen to what we say and do down here, even under the emergency manager. So I want to take this opportunity to say to Ms. Kroon, I enjoyed um, the time that you were in the first ward as the council person. And we just finished the primary a couple of weeks ago. And um, I look forward to any help or support that you can give me. I want the people in the first ward and all across the city to know that when they talked about a tornado hitting in Beecher, it didn't just hit in Beecher, it hit in the first ward. Ms. Kroon can tell you and I can tell you it was garages knocked over, it was trees knocked down, and when the phones start ringing, they start calling. The first house that I met Ms. Kroon at with the parks people removing the first tree, if I'm not mistaken, if I am, you can correct me, it was at Ms. Fisher's house, and I think Ms. Fisher was on Cranwood. So, it was trees everywhere. And Ms. Kroon, I was kind of jealous because you did a good job. And I appreciate that. I always wanted to be a councilman, but I was watching you work. And I don't want to get emotional. And then I ran across you again at Hasselbrink. And at Hasselbrink, Ms. Poplar, I do get emotional. <laughs> it's true, I can get emotional. But then the next instance was at Hasselbrink and you was communicating with Omar Sims and commissioners and we was communicating with Howard Crofnam and it was some good work done. And it was done on behalf of the seniors and it was some folks working together and you was right there. I knew I was there and I seen everything. So I congratulate you on that. I also was busy as a bee and I turned the corner and I looked and I came at the very end, the work was done. But you did a good job with Phelps over there at the apartments across from Northwestern. It was trash everywhere. You did some cleanups and I say, man, you, this is a good, decent council person, but more than that, and that's why I get emotional, you treated me a certain way. I appreciate that. Switching gears, I do look at the Eighth Ward, and I do look at the talk I've heard about appointing Pastor Flynn. I had conversation with Councilman Sargentson. Councilman Sargentson is a dear friend to me. I've heard him say my name to be appointed one time. Councilman Sargentson and I, I don't care if the city know, we're about the same size and even this suit I got on is his. He gave it to me. 
And so we talk. Councilman Neely and I go to church together, we talk. BB and I, Councilman Nolan, we talk. Ms. Croom and I, we talk. Y'all might not even know it, but I got Ms. Poplar's cell phone number. I talked to Scott the, <laughs> I talked to Scott the other day. We talk, and Josh and I talk. I've said to a couple council people, and I listened to the interaction between Ms. Croom when you responded to Dumas, but Mr. Dumas, he says. But my point is this. When I subpoenaed Mike Brown on the stand, he told me the charter has not been revoked. Peter Bates said the same thing. And I do understand Public Act 436. That's what we're operating under now. We repeal Public Act 4. And I got to speed it up because the bail is going to go off. But my position is this. If I sit on the council, I would make it clear to the media, and I would make it clear to that media over there, three cameras, what is they here for? Is it something on the agenda I don't know? Or has it got something to do with the Eighth Ward? And then I would make it clear to the Flint Journal, and they would make it clear to Mike Brown, as I sum up. I would make it clear that I do have a duty and a responsibility to appoint whether or not he's sworn and seated, whoever it is, whether they're sworn and seated, I'd go through the motions. And I would let it be clear that we're not overriding the emergency manager. We're just doing something because we can. And then if he choose not to revoke his resolution, because the media told me it was a resolution rather than an order. It's a, directive. it's a directive. Then I would try to get him to rescind that directive after the fact. I wouldn't offend him at this point, even though I will offend him if I go to court and fight legally. I'll do it. I'm not asking y'all to do it. But I believe I know Mike Brown well enough that if he's seen the will of the people, the will of the representatives that he might very well rescind it. Scott, I ain't going to have time to do the update on what happened with Genesee Towers, but I'm here to tell you, believe me, the law and the courts are telling me that in this case and in most cases, the council should do what it feels and work out problems later because there's so much mess, even with the water thing with Valdemir, Washington. We'll see how it all clears out at the end. Thank you for your indulgence. Thank you, Eric. OK, our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Chris Del Moroni. Th thank you. My name is Chris Del Moroni. I live in Flint, Michigan. Is there a hissing with this mic, or? No, it's working. Not everybody can hear okay. you. Um, the, um, I think the council meetings should be held more often. And I think council should approach the emergency financial manager in that regard. And one of the reasons that we may want that more often is as the council and the emergency financial manager in the state move to a I think it's called an advisory board of some nature, some sorts, that it would be good to have the meetings more often. Um, we heard a little bit tonight on the council having power, not having power. And I, I believe, you know, even though the emergency manager can override things and do it as he pleases, I think council has more power than what you're led to believe. And, and what I mean by that is we saw how important it was for council to have the full vote of council and endorsement for the Kerry Dondi Water Authority. And on that evening, it appeared council had some authority, some power. Uh, tonight we hear, well, there's things that council cannot do. I would say that if council really wanted something, it would be to go to the community with a unified voice and saying, if these things don't happen in our community, 
or if these things continue in our community, don't expect us to buy in on the master plan. Don't expect us to do what you want us to do to get what you need or what you want. Because there's some things that council wants. There are some things that the community wants. And if there are powers to be in the community that wants the buy-in of council on certain things, then that is where your true power is. Um, I have great concern when I read things in the Flint Journal, and it's not about the Flint Journal, but we, you know, the emergency manager says he's not gonna appoint a council person to the eighth ward because he's trying to save some money. And then they give Atwood Stadium away for $33,000. And then, you know, we, we hear that in the master plan that they want to talk about making the parks more natural because there's not money to maintain the parks. Well, quite frankly, there's not money to maintain our roads, our paved roads. So should we expect them to go back to dirt roads? I mean, some already are. There are potholes now in the dirt. The asphalt, the cement is gone, and there are potholes in the dirt. Um, it's most unfortunate. We're starting a study to look at the amount of money that the city has been collecting and where it's going. So we've seen here in the community lately where obviously the water and sewer rates have gone up. We've passed the police millage. We're paying more in lights. Now all these things did not exist except our, our current mayor did raise the, the water rates about 70 percent within 12 months at one point but basically our water and sewer rates have gone up the police millage has, has gone up we're paying for lights the city no longer has to pay for lights so all this money that is being generated that the city is actually saving where is it going and this is the first year that we're balancing your budget and we're here in 2015 they're going to need another tax another tax increase I I don't believe the math is adding up we'll add up but we're gonna work with the numbers um, it's it's unfortunate I, I want to go back to Atwood Stadium again the, the authority did a great job in keeping that stadium open but it, it's just, it's a community asset. And I, I mean, you know, there's not much left that the city could really give away at this point except the water plant. I mean, you could say, well, we'll give away our parks, but I mean, you know, empty land, you know, it's all over the place. Um, you don't need to buy a park from the city to acquire empty land in the city of Flint. I mean, for a few dollars, you can get something from uh, the land bank. Um, but again, realize what your power is and how you can use it as a city council. Even though you may not have that actual vote on something, by putting pressure somewhere else, you acquire that power to get done what you need to accomplish what the residents of the city of Flint need. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Brad Micas. Brad Micas, he left, okay. Pastor Latrell Holmes, left. he left also. Alex Harris, he's waving. he's waving, okay. Lawrence Miller, 